Hi everyone, the Pacific National Exhibition has just announced that they're going to be back for the 2021 season and I'm excited about that. But today I wanted to explore the history of the park and take a look back at the time during World War II that these buildings behind me were used as a Japanese internment camp. Let's go explore. Hastings Park is the city of Vancouver's second largest park. It was designated in 1889 for the use, recreation and enjoyment of the public. Horse racing events began there in 1892 and the Happy Land Amusement Park opened in 1926. But things changed when Canada declared war on Japan in December of 1941. Fearing an invasion, the Canadian government tightened control on the Japanese community by impounding almost 1,200 fishing boats and shutting down Japanese newspapers and schools, despite the fact that over 60% of Japanese Canadians were born in Canada and 14% were also naturalized citizens. In February 1942, Prime Minister William Lyon Mackenzie issued a series of orders to evacuate all persons of Japanese origin to protective areas. Large exhibition halls at Hastings Park had been used for military purposes during the First World War, and so the Department of Defense selected Hastings Park as a temporary holding camp for Japanese Canadians, while more permanent internment camps were being built in the BC interior. At that time, many Japanese Canadians were forcibly removed from their homes with only 24 hours notice and escorted by the RCMP to Hastings Park. They were only allowed to carry one or two suitcases each, but many people lost all their belongings and families were separated with no indication of when they would be able to see each other again. The exhibition spaces, including the livestock buildings, were quickly repurposed as dormitories for men, boys, as well as women and children. Men's and women's mess halls were kept separate and spaces were created for medical services, religious services and education. The grounds at Hastings were also used to collect and store vehicles impounded from Japanese Canadians. Several of the buildings used during the internment still remain today. Rollerland was originally the Pure Foods building, but in 1942 that building was used to house boys ranging from 13 to 18 years old. Part of the building was also used for showers, washrooms and toilet facilities. And later due to overcrowding, the building was also used for women as well. The Forum Building was built in 1933 as a workers' relief project. But in 1942, hundreds of bunk beds for men and boys over the age of 18 filled the Forum Exhibition Hall. Records show that at one time over 1,200 people were living in this confined space. Japanese Canadian women, children and babies were housed in the Livestock Buildings. Washroom facilities were very crude with waste flowing through open troughs. Those housed in this building recall that the whole place smelled of manure and maggots. The conditions at Hastings Park were primitive and unsanitary. When recalling the conditions on site, many people remember the deplorable smell as well as the noise, boredom and terrible food that was served. The memory of those interned at the camp helped tell the story. Hastings Park was a holding pen for human beings. Expropriated in the first weeks of March, it had been converted from an animal to a human shelter in only seven days. When we got to Hastings Park, it was dirty. There was animal poop and bugs. Birds flew around inside and pooed on our beds. There was no toilet, so we used the animal drinking trough. We were confined within the high wire fence of Hastings Park, just like caged animals. All the doors were locked so you couldn't go out and get fresh air. With thousands of people crowded together in dusty, harsh conditions, diseases like mumps, measles and chickenpox quickly spread throughout the building. Using discarded equipment and furniture, a 180-bed general hospital and a smaller 60-bed hospital for tuberculosis patients were quickly set up in a poultry barn. Over 8,000 Japanese Canadians passed through this camp. 
with over 3,800 people housed at the facilities during the peak of population. Finally, by September of 1942, the numbers began to dwindle as the Japanese Canadians were sent by train to housing projects or other work projects across Canada. Some were sent to road camps in BC and Ontario, sugar beet projects in southern Alberta and Manitoba, or to towns with purpose-built camps in the remote mountains of the central BC. The largest of these camps was called Tashmi near Hope, British Columbia. The Hastings Park Holding Camp was officially closed at the end of September 1942, although 105 tuberculosis patients stayed until March 1942 when the sanatorium in New Denver was finally completed. The internment of Japanese Canadians caused many families to be uprooted and to have to start over with almost nothing. In 1943, the Canadian government assured Japanese Canadians that their property would be held in trust and would be returned to them once they resettled elsewhere in Canada. But that promise went largely unfilled and any property was generally sold once confiscated. In 1946, community members were given the option to either move east of the Rockies or to return to Japan. Many years later, in 1988, the Government of Canada made a formal apology and acknowledged these wartime injustices. A memorial plaque has been erected in the Momiji Gardens near Hastings Park. Every year, thousands of people populate the fairgrounds, but while they enjoy their food and entertainment, there aren't many reminders of the park's dark wartime history. Other than a few small plaques placed by the remaining buildings. Thanks for remembering this important piece of Vancouver's history with us. Until next time, remember to keep exploring. <laughs>